Hello, everybody. Welcome in to Watch Me Wednesday. Today is going to be a little different. I don't have a, a sewing tutorial or quilting tutorial, possible, um, what you would call it, a traditional tutorial, but it is a tutorial per se. Um, welcome in to everybody. If you are here, say hello. And um, I wanted to uh, go over this very special kind of um, tutorial today because I know a lot of you have questions about Judy Niemeyer's patterns. So it's uh, going to be a really, really, uh, I think, helpful uh, tutorial today. So hi, hi, Kyra, how are you? Happy Wednesday to you. If you're here, type hello. Let me see who you are. Uh, and definitely, hi, Sharon. Hi, Denise. And at the end, I am going to do a Q&A again. If you haven't seen the new format that I'm doing, the Q&A is going to look like this. Hey, there's Lisa. Nice quilt, huh, Lisa? <laughs> um, Janae, nice to see you. Gail, Mary, Beth, Teresa, awesome. So get your questions ready because you will get to see them up here. If you have a question towards the end, I'm going to put you up on the screen. Hey, Teresa, how are you? So everybody can see what question that you have. And then as I answer the questions, uh, I will click off of them so that um, we can put the next one up there. Oh, Maggie from Canada. Hello, Maggie. How are you? I bet you it's uh, um, quite cold in Canada. However, you know that um, it's pretty cold here in Arizona, which is interesting. There's Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth. How are you? Uh, Let's see for a second here. Hang on. There we go. Okay. So um, we are going to get started. Who oh, checking in from San Diego? Terry. Nice to see you, Terry. And it is sunny but cool there too. Yeah, we're getting here in Arizona the same cold um, that you're getting. And uh, we had actually some snow the other day. Do you believe it? It's crazy. I don't understand why we are getting snow, but today it's actually a little bit more temperate. It's um, 50 some degrees, although I really haven't been outside. So anyway, I would like to get started. And what I'm going to do again, um, hold all your questions until the end, until I'm done uh, reviewing the Judy Niemeyer pattern and, and kind of how you go over that. If you want to hit the share button, please do. I am going to put a little timer up for myself so I know that I'm uh, within um, a certain amount of time because I don't want you guys to kind of trail off on me because <laughs> that does happen. And then um, if I finish up before that timer, great, and we'll take questions either way before or after the timer. So I'm going to put a little countdown timer in and I'm gonna also I'm going to show you what um, um, we're going to be talking about down here. We're going to zoom in on that. So if you're new to the new format, this is going to be great. So you'll really like it. So, okay. So hello to all of you who are just joining me. We are going to be talking about the Judy Niemeyer patterns, Quilt Works patterns, that I think um, if you have ever picked up one and you've been kind of bamboozled about wow, the instructions are kind of over my head and you put it back in that pattern sleeve and you put it away never to be seen again. Well, I hope to demystify and debunk some of the things for you to make you feel a little bit more at ease with uh, taking on the pattern. So I'm going to switch to the different the other camera so that you can see what we're going to be talking about and I'll put me in the little corner there so that you can see me too. This particular pattern I pulled out today because of the beautiful quilt that's on the cover, obviously, which is behind me. So if you see me in the picture in picture, it's right there. Um, and Lisa Slinsky is joining us and she actually pieced the quilt for me out of my ancient etchings fabric from Island Batik. Um, but the cool thing about 
her patterns is that they do look difficult. And I think difficulty is a matter of perspective. It is, um, they're not as difficult as they are, I think, time consuming more so. So I'm going to take kind of walk you through. So when you get a pattern, it's going to come in a plastic um, uh, bag and you're going to get several parts in it. You get the cover sheet, which you see here. So I'm going to set that aside. You get all the paper foundations and templates. And I'll, I'll talk about those in a few minutes. And you also get the instructions. This particular pattern comes with chapters. Okay, so you'll see how they're all different in their different booklets. So you will obviously start off with the introduction. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. And the introduction is not something that you want to gloss over because if you've never picked up one of her patterns, it's really good to read through this. In this, she does show you here what will be included as far as your newsprint and how many sheets are included in the pattern. So for instance, and let me zoom in just a little more so you can see, um, the it shows here for uh, newsprint 158, there is one sheet. So if you go through and take inventory yourself of what you have, you will note that you ha should have exactly what is listed here. If you do not, you can always contact Quiltworks and they will ship out just that one sheet if you need just one sheet, if you need two. Sometimes there's errors in packing the patterns, so um, just be aware of that. So these are everything you should, the first thing you should do when you open her patterns is look and take inventory. The next thing is you want to read through the different techniques that are described in the pattern. She also gives you a supply list and she does go ahead and she describes what each of those things that you will need are. So if you're not familiar with things like, um, you know, an add a quarter ruler or a uh, purple fang or whatever, she will talk about those and she's going to talk about it. Let me pull it in here. She goes ahead and she defines them for you, what they are. So that's super important. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you can see the whole page here. Okay. So now the next thing on this particular pattern, and most patterns are set up generally the same way. Again, this one I said is set up in chapters. So in chapter one, you're going to be working on this particular unit in the feathered star. And you're, you're going to have a little like swatch type sheet here. So you're going to be placing your swatches of fabric. So what I do is I put a little bit of glue and I cut my fabric swatch to size. This is super important to have your swatches here because that way you will remember what goes where because it matches with the sections that you have for that are you're going to be uh, paper piecing. And it's the same for all of the chapters. She does the same thing. And she also gives you binding and backing here. Then she talks about the template layout sheets. So if you're not familiar with a template layout sheet, and the best way I like to describe it to my students is a template layout sheet is if you've ever sewn garments, it's like a piece of tissue paper, but in this case it's newsprint. Um, and you lay it over top of your fabric and you just cut on the lines. So in, in each of these boxes here, she uh, will tell you what the template sheets are and which bag they go in. We get very organized. So they're going to go in their individual bags with the fabric that you've cut after you've laid the template layout sheet and the paper foundation pieces. So that's important to note which bag you're using and um, which units they are. So she, it's very organized um, way to do things. And she's very organized in this introduction booklet. So do not pass go. Make sure you read this. She talks about um, your cutting information, uh, how to do it. She talks about your needles, um, pressing, uh, thread size. So general instructions that you need to know. She also gives you a, a layout review for each chapter as well and she labels them accordingly for this particular pattern. 
Now on the back of the introduction book, because this is stuffed in your um, plastic sleeve, she also gives you your um, amount of yardage that you need for each thing. So your yardages so that you can purchase or you can pull from your stash and you should put your fabric swatches there as well. Okay, so that's your introduction book. So I'm gonna place that over here. Then in each chapter, and they're set up basically the same. So I'm gonna go over just one chapter um, because I'm gonna show you a couple other patterns that are set up uh, similarly. This particular chapter, it, it's bag number one, and we're always gonna try and start with bag number one, just to be organized. And this is unit AR, and then she also has in chapter one, bag two, and bag three, and there's different units. She goes through each um, unit and each fabric and how you should cut the fabrics, how you should stack them, and which layout sheet to go on. Now, if you cut everything properly according to the template layout sheets, everything that you need for unit AR would be in bag one. So your template layout sheet, your paper foundations, and your fabrics for that particular unit, that's the only thing that would be in that bag. And you would go ahead and cut accordingly. And basically, if you look at the graphics, the graphics are, are pretty much, I call them Ikea kind of things. You can almost do this entire pattern by looking at the graphics. So, uh, and then she goes on to, once you've got all, everything cut out, she goes on how to set up your um, fabrics so that you can chain piece. Chain piecing is super important and it is super efficient. So she goes and she gives you the demonstration on how to set it up and how to paper piece. And she will do that for each unit because each unit is set up just a little different because the shapes are different. And she will talk you through the paper piecing. And then she will show you on each chapter what your layout will look like, okay? And then by the time you get to, in this particular pattern, by the time you get to the fifth booklet, she gives you the layout and how you're going to sew your wedges together. And let me just slip here. Hang on a second. Ah. And she shows you how to join everything together. And that is a basic, basic overview of that particular pattern. But I want to show you your newsprints and your layout sheets. So your, your paper foundation sheets. So you'll see this number NP160. Make sure you know that um, what number your sheet is because that's how you take inventory, like I had told you in, in, the, uh, in the beginning. So you'll have those. This is TP template um, layout, and this actually has the exploded view. And you will also have um, all the other sheets here that you need the template layout sheets, the foundations, here's the template layout sheets, and they're all assigned a different number. So if you need a, a particular sheet, you need to have that number when you contact Quiltworks. Now, I'm gonna show you another, just a little tip. When I put together a pattern, when I'm doing one of her patterns, I like to use my, um, I like to use Quiltster. So I'm gonna put that graphic up here so that you can see. Oops, there we go. I use Quilster to do a custom layout. And this is a, a quilt that I did a few years back at a Quilters Oasis. I taught a class. But you can do a custom layout and you can get all your colors done and your fabric swatches. And then I take the pattern that I just showed you and I cut it down the middle and I slip it into um, sheet protectors. The nice thing about slipping it into sheet protector is that you're very organized. See my swatch page there? You're very super organized and you can take these um, wet erase markers and you can mark off and check off what you've done and what you haven't. And when you want to, if you made a mistake, you can erase it. So if you have not checked out Quiltster, that's a good thing. And also, this is a great way to organize your pattern. Okay? Now... Here's another pattern that's much simpler than the feathered star. Uh, let me just show you. Here's, I just want to put the picture up of the feathered star. There's the cover of the feathered star, but here is the actual, uh, whoops, the actual 
feathered star there. Um, but this one's the fractured paint box and it comes the same way. You get your newsprint, you get your um, foundations and your template layout sheets. But this one's much simpler. This one's just like four pages. Just because it's a simpler pattern, uh, there's not as much instruction involved, but you get your yardage, you get your definitions, you get your inventory here, your um, supply list, and you know everything's set up pretty much the same way, but it's just in a shorter format because it's a simpler pattern. So there are patterns that are going to be a little simpler to dive into, um, but they're set up basically the same way. And one other thing I want to show you um, is technique of the month. The technique of the month, this one just came out, the coral reef. And if you guys are following me, you've seen mine. I've been working on it. These are set up, all the techniques of the month are set up a, a pretty, pretty much kind of the same as the feathered star that I just showed you. They're booklet format. So each one comes with a multitude. You can see a multitude I don't know. I, I don't want to take them out because it's not easy to get in there. Um, they're booklets. They're all in booklet, different booklets. And I basically set it up the same exact way in a notebook like this so that I can lay it flat. And I go through one book at a time. I go very, very um, organized. I go from book one to book two. And that's how I attack one of her patterns just because it makes it simple. And again, remember I said, it's not always that it's difficult, it's time consuming. So you have to be willing to put in the time um, and just take it one bag at a time, one booklet at a time, one piece at a time, but don't skip over that introduction if that makes sense to you. Um, so what I'd like to do now, let's see, let me, um, I think, I've covered what I need to cover as far as um, the, the entire pattern. So I hope that was helpful to all of you. I'm going to come back and we're going to take, we're going to take some questions. Um, I'm going to turn off the timer and um, I hope that, that it was helpful to all of you. And I thank you for coming in for that. Now, if you'd like to stay and uh, I'll answer some questions, I'll put them up on the screen so that you can see them and we will go ahead. So let's see what we have. Um, let's see what, okay. So Brenda, let's see. Brenda says, what is Quiltster in detail as what it is? Okay, so Quiltster is an application um, software that you actually have on your computer, so in your browser. And it is a coloring program for quilts. So it's not a design program per se. So there's loads and loads of fabric in the program. Um, there's loads and loads of patterns. Um, Judy's patterns are in there. My patterns are in there. So if you um, have purchased some of my patterns, you'll see those as well. And you can go in and you can drop in fabric from your stash or drop in fabric from any manufacturers that they have in there, including my fabrics are in there from Island Boutique are in there. So you can design your quilt up front and you can see what it's going to look like before you actually make it. And that's exactly what I did with my feathered star. So if you look at, let me just pull that picture back up here of that. So I, before we actually made the quilt. I had my ancient etchings fabric in Quiltster and then I played with it quite a bit until I got it to a design that I liked and I thought would look beautiful and that was the end result and it honestly it looks just like what I put in Quiltster. So Quilster is a very powerful tool. It doesn't take long to drop in those fabrics and or change them out. Yes, it's subscription based, but you can do it like you can do a month and I think it's like a $10, I think, or you can do a year or something like that, but it's well worth it. If, especially if you're working on a Judy Niemeyer pattern and you really want to see what it's going to look like before you do it. So Quilster is a great program. All right. So let's see who else has a question. Let me go through. Um, uh, let's see. 
Deb says, are there some quilt works patterns that are easier than others? Well, again, easy versus complex. Well, I would say probably, I would guess, yes, there, there are easier ones. So there's smaller ones that would be nice to get started on rather than a larger project. Um, you just have to remember that they're time consuming, just like any quilt. Like you, you, once, when you learned how to quilt and piece, you know, it was probably hard in the beginning when you first tried and then you just got better. So, but what I would recommend, um, is doing something a little smaller, like, um, you know, I had pointed this out, the fractured paint box before that one's a little bit easier. I mean, you, you don't have as much to do. You have the same unit over and over and over again. So you can get used to doing one unit. One of the ones that I like to teach as a beginner quilt, especially if you're um, learning curved piecing is Desert Sky. That's a great one because it's the same unit over and over and over again. And once you learn how to do that unit and you paper piece it, it's, um, it goes pretty quickly. So that's a, a great um, one too. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. We got, wow, we got a lot. Um, let's see, I gotta scroll back. Hang on. Um, I'm not sure if this is a question or not. Uh, Nancy says, I love that they're organized by booklet or chapter makes it less daunting and allows for victory dances when you complete it. Exactly. So I typically like, I said I work by bag or by chapter. When I'm complete with a bag, I put all those units back into that bag and I set it aside and it's done. And yeah, you could do a happy dance then. Absolutely, Nancy Sue. So, um, it's, it's a great way to do it. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, Teresa says, whoops, can I get it up there? Why can't I get her up there? There we go. Okay, can we buy the coral reef yet and explain the mixers? Okay, yes, uh, Teresa, the coral reef's been in my shop for a couple weeks now and I have a few patterns left, so it is available. Um, I think I have a link, if you're watching me on, on uh, Facebook, I have a link above, um, below me, above me, one of those. <laughs> if you're on YouTube, it's below me. Um, and the mixers, so, yeah, that's a great question, Teresa. So on Quiltster, um, what Quiltster can do is there are certain patterns that are mixers, like for instance, the Fire Island Hosta is, is a mixer. So there are pieces that Judy creates that are interchangeable with other pieces or other units, should I say. And you can, if you don't like a way a unit looks, you can swap it out for a different unit and put that in there. You can do every other one. You can do all of them, a different unit. And you can kind of create your own version of that Fire Island Hosta. So that's kind of what a mixer is, if that makes sense. So you're kind of just swapping one unit for another and you're mixing it up and you're getting your own brand of unique, which is kind of cool. So that's a functionality of Quilster. And when you do that, then you can go into, um, Quilster has a marketplace. So once you've got your mixer together, you can go straight to the marketplace and purchase just those papers. So you wouldn't have to buy per se, the pattern Fire, Not Fire Island Hosta because it's no longer the Fire Island Hosta. You would purchase the, the pattern and the sheets for your mixer. And they know exactly what to do. All you do is hit buy and, and it gets sent to you that way. So that's kind of how a mixer works. Okay, so let's see what else do we have. Um, uh, so some, Deb said, do we have access to the technique of the month somehow? Yes, the pattern's available with me. Um, can I explain closer? I hope I did that um, well enough. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, let's see what Carol says. Carol says, with Coral Reef, are there classes for this new pattern, a class online? So there will be classes in person. Um, only certified instructors and certified shops can teach the pattern. So me being one of the, or both, I'm certified instructor and certified shop. I do, I will be able to teach it to you. 
I have chosen to teach it in person only. There are some instructors that are doing Zoom classes, which means they are going to be on specific days. Um, we're not allowed to pre-record the um, technique of the month and have it, like I have online classes that are pre-recorded and that you own for life. That's not allowed for um, the techniques of the month. So you won't see that. So you would have to get involved with a certified instructor that's doing a Zoom class if you want to do it online. And if you want to do it in person, then you're going to have to find, you know, where that instructor is going to be. So once I start traveling again, then you'll see that way. Um, otherwise, I would be local. So because um, right now nobody is really traveling because of COVID. So yes, there will be classes. It's just you're going to have to look for them. And um, and if you're looking for online, um, you're going to have to do it via like a Zoom class, a virtual class. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, yep, Cindy, that's exactly right. Let's see, dining, let's see, dining with the stars, cracker. Yes, those are really good beginning patterns to Mary Beth. Dining with the stars, crackers, absolutely, they're great beginner patterns. There's a lot that are out there. It depends on the technique you want to do. Um, if you want to um, do curves, if you don't want to do curves, if you want to do um, uh, set in seams. Uh, it's, so it, it all depends on what you're looking for. Let's see. What are the mix? Okay. What are the mixers from duty? I'm scrolling through the comments here and the questions. If you've got more questions, put them in and let's see. She does. <laughs> Janae says, I love, love how thorough Judy is with her patterns. That lady thinks of everything. Oh yes. She certainly does think of everything. Um, and she's got a lot of feedback too because she's got a, you know, an army of certified instructors and certified shops. So we're constantly giving feedback um, and she's constantly asking for it. So she's got a lot um, that goes into a pattern, that goes into the birth of a pattern, if you will. Okay, let's see. Um, bum, bum, bum. Uh, for stepping stones, yep, that's a good one. Stepping stones, okay, so Janae also said, um, oops, where'd you go? There we go. Janae also said, first one was stepping stones, yeah, and that's a jelly roll pattern, which is great. And actually also um, fractured paint box is a jelly roll pattern too. Um, I, uh, stepping stones is a great pattern. And again, that's one where you're repeating the same unit over and over and over again. So it's a great um, one to really kind of learn the technique. So yeah, uh, that's a, that's a great one. Um, can I explain? Oh, oh my goodness. Thank you, Deb. Um, yeah. And I forgot to explain that initially. So yes. And actually I put, I have an example for you up here. So let me get rid of this, this overlay up here and let me put up this new one. So great question. Uh, here we go. Okay, so let me see if I'm going to make this a little bigger and it might cover my face, which is okay. So Judy often has corrections. Now this is a correction sheet from the new technique of the month. If you can see, there are some things that are in red. Okay, those are things that were caught after the pattern had been published. They were errors that needed to be corrected within the pattern. So it's important at all times to go back into her site, quiltworks.com with quiltworks with an X.com and go into the corrections page to find if there are any corrections for your particular pattern that you are working on. So if you were per se, if you were working on Butterfly Garden, you would go in and you would look in the pattern listing and you would look at for Butterfly Garden and you would look to see if there were any corrections that have been listed for that pattern. Then you would check and depending on the publication date of your particular pattern that you own, because she, she puts the publication date. Let me just switch cameras for a second and I'll show you what I mean. So let me just switch cameras. 
and I'll show you. I'll zoom in on that. So if you can see here, let me hang on. So you can see right down here, this one has copyright June 16th, but it has a print date of 3-15-17. So if you had a correction that was before your publication date, you probably are going to have to print it off. But if, if the correction had been made after that, well, let me think about this again. Sorry. So you may or may not need the correction because of the print date. So every time they have to reprint a pattern, they always put the corrections in the pattern. But they leave these correction sheets that you see up here. Whoops, I can't. Up there. They leave those in the website so that if you need it, it's there for you to print off and include in your pattern. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. But I always, always, always check if that makes sense. So always, always check. Um, let's see. Um, Oh, you're, you're welcome, Teresa. Love today's show. Thank you for sharing. Let me get rid of this sheet now. There we go. Um, it, I hope, um, and if you have any more questions, you can put, definitely put them up there and I, I will answer. But if I hope that a lot of what I explained today um, helps you feel a little more comfortable in attacking a Judy Niemeyer pattern. I have lots of patterns in my shop if you are interested in purchasing a Judy pattern. Um, I believe I have the link in the description to Judy's pattern. So you can go ahead and you can kind of explore those patterns there. Um, and yes, I do have the um, technique of the month and the technique of the month comes in the wall size and the queen size. Oh, and by the way, this particular pattern, it all there's a ruler that's included in in the um, pattern itself. So it helps you cut some of those curves out that you, you need um, to, to cut out in, in this particular pattern. So um, anyway, so that's super important too. Um, let's see, Leslie says, um, she's working. Hi, Leslie, how are you? Miss you, lady. Um, working on my fractured star today, the one I started the last time I was there, <laughs> last time I was in Connecticut. Uh, love it. Awesome. Um, yeah, since COVID, uh, of course, we're not traveling at all. I haven't actually traveled since probably last January, so almost a year. It's been kind of crazy, right? Um, anyway, so I hope I, I brought you some really good information today, and I hope that you can use the information, and I hope you're no longer afraid to go ahead and tackle one of Judy's um, patterns. I will, I am going to tell you that uh, later this year, I will be filming uh, an online class. It is a unique uh, Judy pattern that will be exclusive to me, and uh, it will be an online class. So if you are interested, my cohort in crime, Lisa Slinsky, is um, going to be helping me out. Actually, we're kind of working on it now in the background. Um, so uh, we will be filming that later this year and hopefully it would be nice, hopefully later this year, as long as we're able to travel. Um, but, uh, and hopefully you'll join me in that class. And I also, if you, if you want a real introduction to paper piecing, I do have um, a Judy Niemeyer class on Craftsy that you can um, join in. That would be awesome. It's the uh, Quiltworks Dresden Plate. That's on Craftsy and that's a smaller project. So you can kind of learn the technique and that's exclusive to Craftsy. And I also have a paper piecing class of my own on my own site. Uh, it's called Paper Piecing the Cactus and Blooms and it's a very beginner class with great impact. So that's something that you might want to try. And I use very similar technique to Judy uh, as far as the paper piecing and setting up. 
So it will actually help you out with putting together one of Judy's. Instructions are not written in the same way, but the techniques pretty much stay the same. So you can apply it either way. So um, uh, Terry is asking, hang on. Uh, can't wait for the new class. Me too, right? Terry is asking online class, Zoom or question mark. Mine will not be Zoom. They will be online class. You will own them for life. So once you purchase it, you have it and you can work. It's very self-paced. So you don't have to be there on a certain day. So it's very self-paced. So if you want to work one hour one day, you can. If you want to work 15 minutes, if you want to work the whole day, you can. That's how my online classes work. So if you're interested, I think I have a link in the description. If I don't, I'll put it there. Um, awesome, Terry, Terry, you took the class. That, and that's the same type of format it's going to be. But I want to tell you, Terry, that um, the classes, the, they're getting better. I have another class that's going to come out. Um, I'm in the process of editing it. And I have another class that's going to come out hopefully this spring, which that which I hope you you will enjoy. It's a multi technique class, um, and I've just gotten a lot better at the editing and the whole camera thing. So it, it's going to actually um, be a lot more impactful for you, and I think you will enjoy it uh, much more. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, my if you and you don't want to invest a lot of money, my treasure chest class is super inexpensive. It's twelve dollars. It's like the cost of a pattern. So you can kind of see what my online classes are like, and that um, I'll put in the description as well. Um, a Zoom quilt along would be great, or a live all day. Oh my God, Laura! I would need to be live all day long. <laughs> I know it's it's something that I've tossed around in my head, but I don't know. I can't wrap my head around that, Laura. Not just yet, <laughs> but you might be able to convince me there. I'm not sure. You can keep trying. Um, anyway, so I think I am about done. If you guys have no more questions, I hope you have enjoyed this Watch Me Wednesday, a little bit different from before. And I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your week. Happy quilting to you all. And I can't wait to see you next week. So have a great day. Thank you for all the love. And I will see you next week. Bye, everyone. <music>